Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to do a video on the difference between not losing weight versus slow weight loss. And the reason is this. A lot of times I'll have people that will contact me and they're saying, I'm not losing weight. Okay. Then I find out they are losing weight, but it's just incredibly slow. So there's a huge difference between not losing any weight at all and losing some weight. Okay. I mean, the actions that you would do if you weren't losing weight are going to be completely different than what you would do if you have slow weight loss. So let's take a look at that. Um, if you put someone on the right program, and, and by the way, I always want to make sure that the data that someone's giving me is correct. So sometimes if they tell me I'm eating perfectly, right, and I don't actually find out what they're eating, I could find out it's not perfect. And that has happened so many times. Also, you could have someone that is possibly cheating and they're not telling you. That's a possibility. So those things you want to rule out. But the point is, if they did everything right and they're not losing weight, then you have to make a huge change, okay? There's some seriously, uh, something stuck in their body. It could be with the thyroid. It could be with the adrenal. It could be with the kidney. And that just requires more data, more testing. I need to dig deep and find out what is behind that, okay? So that's if you're not losing anything. Um, if you're having slow weight loss, it's like molasses. You're losing some, but it's too gradual. You don't want to make a huge change. All you want to do is strengthen the successful actions. Okay, so that's very different. Because if I make so many changes right here, all of a sudden it can turn from here to here. So, so we want to look at the quality and the quantity of the food. So we look at the quality of the protein. Are they doing soy protein isolates? Are they doing too much protein powder? Is it low fat protein powder? That actually raises insulin. Um, or what about uh, the quality of the fats? Are they doing corn oil or, or soy oil? Really bad quality. Are they doing low quality carbohydrates? Are they doing uh, sports drinks? Are they doing just pure sugar, refined carbohydrates like refined breads and things like that? So we look at the quality and then look at the quantity. The protein, is it too high? Is it between three to six ounces? Um, what about the fats? Is it too low or maybe too high? Sometimes they can't, they're not used to digesting all the fat. Um, and maybe, maybe the meal is so large and their metabolism is so small, we have to adjust that. Some people, unfortunately, have such a damaged metabolism, they need to have smaller meals or less frequent meals, okay? Just because everything is molasses. I'll get to that in a second. Um, so the quality and quantity of these proteins, carbohydrates, and fats are vital. And then we look at the frequency of eating. Now, are they doing six meals a day? Well, right there, I'm going to put them to three meals a day because six meals a day is a lot of insulin. Every time you eat, you spike insulin. Or maybe they're at three. Maybe I need to push them down to two meals a day, okay, without any like intermittent fasting in between, no anything between the meals. A lot of people are very successful with that. But there's a small group of people that just have a very, very slow metabolism that I have to put on one meal a day. Now, you might say that's starvation, but it's not because they're having a very large meal, all the nutrients, but their system is so slow that they can run efficiently. Or should I say their system is so efficient, they can run on very small amounts of food because it's such a slow machine. So on some people, we have to do that and they eventually lose weight because the, because the system has been damaged over their life, especially if they've been dieting as a kid or, you know, um, ever since, like, like sometimes even parents put the kids on a diet when they're four or five years old. Well, that's going to really mess up things later in life, okay? Now, the other thing we look at, if it's slow, is there are other body problems. The quality of sleep. Is their bladder waking them up? Is it hot flashes? Is it uh, sinus, like uh, sleep apnea? Do they have those issues? Because if they're not sleeping, that's going to make it slow. I look at Digestion, are they constipated? Do they have heartburn? Do they have ulcers? All that is just a symptom that there's just a digestive issue. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll even put people on a good probiotic and all of a sudden they start losing weight. Or what about their menstrual cycle? The menstrual cycle being too heavy could indicate too much estrogen. And that right there can stop the weight loss, too much estrogen. Um, but I don't ever support um, the weight loss directly with a pill or a nutrient because that doesn't work. There's so many pills out there that people use that say, oh yeah, take this weight loss pill. That doesn't work because the weight is always a symptom of something else. So we know most of the weight problems are related to insulin and insulin resistance. 
So if you support that problem, you'll be way more successful. Um, the, really the only weight loss pill that I use is something called insulin and glucose support, which is, I'll put a link down there if you want more information, but it supports insulin directly. It lowers insulin. And that actually helps, because in the presence of insulin, you're not gonna lose weight. And some people even are pre-diabetic or a diabetic, and they lose weight, but they still have a little insulin problem, they need some support, that's when I would use some nutrition with that. Okay, so I just wanted to differentiate no weight loss or slow weight loss. What category are you in and things that you can do to speed things up. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're enjoying my videos, press the subscribe button below and I will keep you updated on the future events. Thank you so much.